Well, good morning, everyone. How are you doing this morning? Are you alive and kicking? Are you alive with no kicking? Who's alive and kicking? Do we got both in the room? Mary, good for you. Kathy, good for you. Um, I think I'm just alive today, no kicking. Um, how many of you were here yesterday for our Her Market? It was so, so good. For those of you who missed it, I, you know, I hate saying you missed out, but you know what? You like double, triple, quadruple missed out because we had such an amazing event yesterday and we cannot wait to do another one. Um, the fashion show was unbelievable. It was so great. The energy in the room was amazing. And I'm wearing a Rahima today. So I kind of almost actually stole it off the rack before the fashion show. And Rahima was gracious. And so anyways... I love it so much. Um, it is a good day to be in church. Would you stand with us this morning? We love starting our service with worship together. There is nothing better than declaring the character and the goodness and the greatness of our God together as a church. And so we want you to come this morning, whether you're at home or you're here, we believe that you're not here by accident. We believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you this morning and that he has something he wants to speak to you about. And so I just encourage you to, whatever it looks like to you, to open up your hearts and to receive whatever it is that he has for you this morning. Can you do that with me today? Maybe let's just open in prayer. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for this church. We thank you, Lord, for this room that we can come in and that we can worship you with our whole hearts, God, to give you all the glory, all of our attention, Jesus. We love you this morning. And God, we want to honor you in this place. So, Father, help us this morning to turn our eyes upon you and to worship you with glad and sincere hearts. We thank you, Lord. And everybody said, Amen.
slow it down a bit. Just hold inside yourself and realize the goodness of our God. Hallelujah.
darkness in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name. It's Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the street. What it is that you are thinking this morning. I'm not sure what it is that you have carried in with you this morning, but could we just take a couple minutes this morning and just speak the name of Jesus over our circumstance? Because there is no one else and nothing else that matters. Jesus, we acknowledge you this morning. Jesus, we acknowledge that everything that we carry, every burden, every trial, every heaviness, God, you are the only one that makes a difference. And God, we acknowledge this morning that when we don't see you and we don't feel you, that God, you are working on our behalf. And so we thank you, Jesus, in advance for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that you carry us. We thank you, Lord, that you see the whole picture and we only see in part. And so we trust you, Lord, as we walk forward. We trust you, Jesus, that you have our best interest at heart. And we thank you, Lord, that no good thing will you withhold for those who walk uprightly. And so, Jesus, we trust you. Welcome all of you to church again this morning. What a blessing it is to be together on Sunday. I don't know about you, but I really look forward to Sunday. I look forward to Sunday. 
And so it is good to be with you. <laughs> and uh, I just want to comment again because there wasn't uh, like many of you here at the beginning when I welcomed, but we had such a fantastic Her My Market yesterday. It was our first annual, and we didn't know what to expect, and we loved it so much. We had such a great morning. And, you know, sometimes we do these events that aren't just specifically for APC. Like, I'm not just inviting you, but we were opening up the doors, and we were wanting the community to come in. And so I just want to share with you this morning just a quick story story because I would say probably, Brie, correct me, I would say maybe three quarters of our vendors were not from the church and were not probably unchurched. By the end of the morning, we heard such amazing comments from the vendors. And some of them were coming up to meet um, Pastor Blair and I and just asking about our church. And, you know, and, and some people express right away, like, uh, we don't go to church or we haven't been to church in years or, you know, whatever it is. But we heard so many people say, we love the culture here. We love the community here. And one of our team members actually had someone say to them, I just love what's happening. You make me want to go to church. <laughs> Guys, friends... This is why we do what we do. We open up our doors. It is not so that we can have an amazing event and so that we can, you know, promote Rahima because she's phenomenal, which she is. But we do it because we want people to see who we are and what we have. And we want, to, we want people to see the joy and the life that we have in our lives and it would be attractive and that they would say, I want some of that too. And that's why we do what we do. So we left just full hearts, so excited, and we can't wait to do another one. And so you will hear from us again, but that was phenomenal. Anyways, would you all grab the Connect cards that are on the end of your chairs? We want every family every week to fill one out, and this is just a great way for you to stay connected with with um, APC, the events that we have, we constantly have things going on that we don't want you to miss out on. But it's also a really great way for us to stay connected with you. We want to know what's going on in your life. We want to know how we can partner with you, how we can pray with you. Um, we don't know what's going on in your life, and we don't know what major thing that you're praying for. And so we want to come alongside and to support you and to lift you up and to do that in community. And so that's what the Connect card is for. And so if you could grab that and fill that out. That would be phenomenal. Um, we just have a couple things coming up in community. Pastor um, Aiden talked last week that we will be having a youth um, uh, missions trip this Sunday. And so there's a fundraiser going on out in the lobby at the table. You can see it. We have some really fun um, APC merch that we're selling out there um, as well. And so go check that out. And then beside that is the sheet for the youth fundraiser. Um, I also want to remind you of the life group that's happening on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. in the prayer room. Anybody's welcome. You don't have to start at the beginning. You can start anywhere. Weeks, weeknights, weekends are crazy, and we get that. And so we wanted to provide an extra time for you to come for Bible study and for connecting in prayer with other people. And that's 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings in the prayer room. So um, please... Uh, feel free to come. Um, also wanted to remind you, I don't think I have a slide, but of the 24-7 prayer line that we have, anyone pray? Um, I just wanted to remind you of that. We have some cards out in the lobby. Grab one before you go today, but that's just a great, it's an anonymous way. And if you are just in the middle of something in the week and you really, really need prayer and you can't think of somebody to call in the moment, you call that line and they will pray with you. And so it is such a fantastic tool that we have as a church, and so we want you to take advantage of that. Um, finally, I want to remind you that next week is Father's Day, and we have decided that we are going to do a bit of a Jersey baseball theme, and then we're going to serve hot dogs after. And so Mike and Delano graciously offered to serve you guys some barbecued hot dogs after church. And so just push your reservations back. It's going to be a blast. We'll have a photo booth. We're going to have hot dogs. It's going to be a really fun time. And so that is next Sunday. All right. I think that's it for me. Um, kids, you can head off with Pastor Christina downstairs. The rest of you, would you stand up this morning, welcome one another to church, tell someone how terrific they look, and we will be back in just a few minutes.
Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad in it. Hey! And fear seems where I believe that you are more than enough, more than enough for me. Hey! You are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am weak. When I'm standing. Well, it's good to hear so many voices getting a greeting in the room. This is great. We love the community and we love uh, the cafe that's helping you uh, stay with us this morning. And we're going to finish our service today with communion. So I hope that you have the communion emblems with you and uh, they're ready to celebrate what Jesus has done and celebrate the gospel together with us. And after the service today, I'm inviting all of the members, anyone can be invited, but we need the members for our special, special members meeting after the service today for our unique uh, Anka changes to our bylaws, and it shouldn't be too long of a meeting. We are ready and prepared for that, an exciting end uh, to the struggle that uh, is just keeping our bylaws updated with the Ontario government's policies. So please stick around if you're a member. We certainly absolutely have to have a quorum to make sure that these passes go through. But if you're interested in what membership means or what a business meeting looks like or a special members meeting, you're welcome to stay and observe and uh, ask questions after. So so good to have you here. And if you're brand new with us as well, we want to give you a special welcome. So glad that you've taken the courage to join us this morning to meet some different people and to experience church. Maybe church is, is something you're not necessarily uh, something used to and, or spiritual conversations. We want you to know that this is a great place to ask questions, to discover the truth together, a safe place to, to journey towards faith and to journey towards what God has for your life to discover that. So I hope that you do that today. When Jesus came, um, John wrote these words about him in John chapter 1, and, and he's focusing on because Jesus came, he demonstrated 100% of grace and 100% of truth together, that he isn't one or the other, he is absolutely both. And because he's come to earth, we get to experience grace upon grace, which is our theme this year. And to tie closely together that you can't really understand grace without understanding truth. 
and you can't understand truth without grace. And we've been unpacking that all year long in a variety of different ways and uh, discovering about the truth of who God is. And so today we're going to talk a little bit more about the truth and where we find truth because of information and knowledge that's in our lives. Uh, a couple of months ago, back on April the 17th, uh, there was a story that came out online, and it was really kind of interesting how this story kind of developed. Let me walk you through it. It's this NBA player, Clay Thompson, with the Golden State Warriors. I, I'm not a big basketball fan, but I found this story to be quite interesting. He, on, uh, on April 17th, had an absolutely terrible game. And so he, every shot he, he took, it, it just wasn't seemed to work out. So people were teasing him online, saying that because he missed a lot of shots, what you call that is a brick, like that, that shot was like a brick. Does that make sense? And so then other people were teasing about he was throwing up so many bricks that he was vandalizing their own house. Like they were friends, they were big fans of the Golden State Warriors, but because he shot so badly, it was like he was throwing bricks at my house. And because of all of this kind of language and the amount of teasing, what happened was is that there's this uh, AI program on Twitter that takes the Twitter uh, teasing and tweets and the rest of it and made an article around what people were teasing him about. And the article was produced, it, it sounds like this. In a bizarre turn of events, NBA star Clay Thompson has been accused of vandalizing multiple houses with bricks in Sacramento. Authorities are investigating the claims after several individuals reported their houses have been damaged with windows shattered by bricks. Clay Thompson has not yet issued a statement regarding these accusations. The incidents have left the community shaken, but no injuries were reported. The motive behind this alleged vandalism remains unclear. So if you're just scrolling along and you're like, what in the world is an NBA store vandalizing people's homes about and not reporting about it? You could be left quite shocked because all of that is completely untrue. So when we're reading and when we're making big decisions, and when we're understanding on the pursuit of truth for your life, where do you go for the truth? When you have a big decision in your life, where do you go to go, what am I going to do? How do I make this decision? Where do I get the answers to the things that I'm looking for? Or where do we go when it's, when it's about how do I deal with my friendship here, relationship going on that they've offended me and I've offended them and it's gone back and forth and it hasn't gone so well. Where do you go for the answer to that? To that? Where do you go for the answers of, I'm not sure what the, by purpose of my life, what am I going to take in school? What is my major? Where am I going to be drawn to? Like, where do you go to make a, de a bit large decision like that? You're in a job and you're, you're not sure, content in it. You wonder where you're going in life and you're like, should I start my own business? Should I, should I go off into this new area? Should I quit everything and move in that direction? Where do you go for those kind, that kind of information, that kind of truth, that kind of help? Do you flip a coin? Do you ask Siri? Do you turn to a pod podcast? Do you ask a stranger? How do you find real wisdom? With so much information available, with so many voices around us, how do we make a good decision? Because in the middle of all of this noise, we really need wisdom every single day of our lives. Wisdom is to know where to find the truth, when to use wisdom, and what to do with wisdom. This is our subject today. There's something we can all relate to and something we need help with. So let me kind of walk you through Th those kind of definitions of how big uh, these things are between information, knowledge, truth, and wisdom. Let's look at these and kind of break it down. So first of all, we have this information that's out there and the vast number of information that is out there. Do you know that 360 billion emails are sent every single day? Now that's a full inbox. Overwhelming, 300 every single day. 107 billion text messages are sent, and 5 billion videos are watched on YouTube. This is an unbelievable amount of information. There's 450 billion gigabytes of data created every day online. And my computer for that idea is, I only have uh, one terabyte on my computer, which is such a small amount of what is being created absolutely every day. 
We are completely inundated, oversaturated with information. News reports, news feeds, television shows, websites, advertisements, books, articles, blogs, podcasts, social media posts. The list goes on and on. We've never had so much access to so much information all of the time simultaneously in the history of the human race. It has gone viral with pandemic proportions. Imagine information is like food where you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet except the buffet is the size of a city. Right, it's the size of the city, and people are constantly adding food to the list while other people are just throwing food down your throat, and somebody else is throwing liquid down your throat as well, and it never ends, it's only increasing. Did we know that it was 7 billion smartphone users in the world, which is 87% of the whole population? This is just wild, and we all, on average, check our phones or look on our phones for about five and a half hours each and every day. And I wonder what you, how much you spend time on your smartphone. Between 100 and 200 times a day, we pick it up and look at it. And it could be for work, but it could be for social, it could be for entertainment, it's because somebody in your house needs you and is looking for that connection, but we're always picking up our phone. And I encourage you right now, go to settings and find out what was your average for last week. Are you above that five and a half or below that five and a half? You might be actually surprised with how much I, you pick up your phone on an ongoing basis that's just giving you more information. And that might not even be a bad thing that it's this long. It's just more and more information is flooded to our hearts and our minds and our thoughts every single day. Where does all this information come from? Well, it comes from three different primary sources. We believe that it comes from God, it comes from humans, and it also comes from the devil. Where it comes from is extremely important because we believe that God's is truth and information from humans can contain truth. And according to Jesus, the information that comes from the devil, according to John 8, that he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, where there is no truth in him, where he lies and he speaks his native language, for he is a liar, he is a liar and the father of lies. Where you get your information from is so vitally important as we begin to figure out what knowledge is, what truth is, and what in the world, how do we apply that to wisdom. The source of the information is so important. To realize again, maybe you've never heard that before, but we honestly believe that God speaks the truth and the devil is not just trying to mislead you, but it's trying to trap you in it. As we look at even a brief moment at the fall of mankind from Genesis chapter 3, we see that the truth was, the truth was lied to towards Eve. It's that temptation moment where looking at a fruit and being filled with, she thought the emotional side of the food would be delicious. That lie turned into deception because it made itself a snare. The temptation became a snare. The temptation became deception. And because it's a snare, it's meant to trap you. It's meant to grab you, it's meant to hold you, it's meant to contain your understanding about what the truth really is, which only makes all of this information more and more difficult to apply towards wisdom. This is the information that's brought before us today. We find it amazing that so many people are trusting information where there's no way to know for sure that what they are swallowing is actually true. Do we ever just pause and go, how do I know this true story is actually true? Before I hit send to something else or before I read it and share it with somebody else verbally in a conversation, how do we know that that information is actually true? And where is that leading? We are experiencing unprecedented amount of information, we have a, yet we have a famine of true wisdom. We could say that we are drowning in information yet starving for wisdom. And as a result, we can be malnourished mentally, spiritually, and be very unhealthy. So we have information. And then we have knowledge. 
And there's two ways to experience knowledge. One is to have information of facts and then a logical deduction to those facts that, that come true to you. So we understand two plus two equals four. When it's shown to be the case, then we know it's to be true. But the other side of knowledge, there's a knowledge that refers to gaining understanding by experience. That we can have knowledge by gaining understanding of experience for something for yourself so that we can really know it. This applies to people or relationships and situations and activities, events in our lives. You, you know a person through relationships and experience. You know about baseball because you play it yourself. You know about tragedy because you've gone through it yourself. And when the Bible speaks of knowledge, it's referring to this last one, that you can experience the information personally for yourself, that when you're reading the Bible, it's not something that was written once upon a time, but it seems to come alive. It comes alive and starts to almost read you and become a part of you and light something up in you. It speaks towards knowledge to say these words were true when they were written and are true for us here today. That's how the scriptures speak about knowledge throughout the Bible. And from knowledge, we move over to the truth. The truth is information and knowledge are an effort to discover and un understand truth. So we have information and knowledge, and that's what it's leading towards for truth. But there's a couple other factors that slide into our understanding of what truth is when we're looking at all of this information and truth. And that's opinion and preference. The author Brett McCracken says this, Feelings now overrule facts. We assert as facts what we feel to be true. And when someone challenges us, we turn it back on them. Because how dare you question the validity of our feelings? To, one's left felt, to, one, to have one's felt truth invalidated is to have one's very identity dismissed. Let me say that last line again. To have one's felt truth invalidated is to have one's very identity dismissed. And we all do this. In that moment, you might have been like, oh, I've seen that to be true. I've been in a conversation or an argument where we've gone back and forth. And how do you really know what you've heard? And you're like, well, this is what I've experienced. Well, this is what I've experienced. And you're basically like, are you calling me a liar? You're not calling me a liar? Because of our opinions matter and our preferences matter. But we all have a tendency to do this. Each and every one of us here in the room enter conversations with opinions and preferences to everything. And this is good for you to, yourself to know. It's like before I speak, I have to realize how much have I put into this moment. How much of myself of this is preference and opinion? And then to back it up even further to realize, does the truth depend on my opinion? The actual absolute truth that's beyond ourselves, is it about my preference? Is it about our opinion? You would say no, because the truth is we are not determiners of truth, but we are the discoverers of it. We are not the determiners of truth, but we are the discoverers of it. And this is so important in the conversation of information, knowledge, and truth that leads towards wisdom. We finally get to wisdom, where information is the starting point, Knowledge is about understanding by experience, and wisdom is knowing how, when, where, why, and with whom to share that knowledge with. It's about knowing the right thing to do in any given situation. So true wisdom, again, is where to find that truth, what to do with it, when to use it, and how to apply it to our lives. So how do we get wisdom? What does the Bible speak about getting wisdom. Where does it begin? King Solomon said in Proverbs 4, the whole chapter of it, says, get wisdom and understanding, though it might cost you all you have. Though it may cost you all you have. So the way to get wisdom, what does the Bible speak about wisdom? How do we get it from God? Well, it begins with knowing God. Listen to Proverbs 9, chapter 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. In the New Testament, Paul writes, All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. What a great verse. It is because of God that you are in Christ, who has become for us wisdom 
from God. That is righteousness, holiness, and redemption. It begins with knowing God. It begins with the desire in your heart to know God, to see what God makes. It's to understand about who he is and what he is giving to all of us. This is where it begins. To really understand the wisdom of God becomes, becomes with really believing that God created everything and he is aware of everything and he is involved in our lives and around our lives that he knows the intricate details of our hearts and minds and is leading us towards him. But the fear of the Lord begins with the wisdom the wisdom becomes from the fear of God to respect about who God is actually giving us. So I believe this question came up at the beginning of this year when we were looking at the parable of the servant that received a great forgiveness from the king but could not give that forgiveness away, that we believe that one of those lines of why he doesn't give it away, he doesn't understand what he was given and from whom he received it from. It begins with wanting to know God. The curiosity of wanting to know God will be lead you on a path to realize that all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Jesus. And this is what he's come to reveal for you. The second one is about asking God. I love this one. I feel it's a key part of today's message. Asking God for wisdom. In uh, James chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, it says, If you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. And that believe is referring to the first point about knowing God. That we should ask God for it. When we think about our prayers this past week, when you think about what you're praying about, we thank God, we praise God, we ask God to move in our lives. But how often do you pause and go, God, I need some wisdom. I'm making a decision. I need wisdom. No, I think most of us pray, God, would you fix this situation for me? For my preference, opinion would rather be that this pain is removed from my life. As opposed to asking, God, would you give me wisdom in understanding what is going on in this situation that I'm uncomfortable with? Isn't there a different prayer in that? Do you see that? God, I'm in a situation, instead of just wanting to get out of a difficult situation or out of an awkward moment or, or any of that, you're asking, God, would you give us wisdom and understanding about why it's like this and help me to know what to say and to have you glorified in it? What a different kind of prayer. But maybe you're sitting here today and going, how, can God actually give me the answers that I need in the unique situation that I'm in? You know, you, you might have, this comes up in our house, it came up in our house a lot throughout, throughout high school for my kids, and they're like, we're going through these problems and struggles and relationship things, and I'm like, well, did you pray about it? And they're like, how can God fix the relationship between me and my friend? How could God fix this situation for me? And you're like, what he does is he gives you wisdom, an understanding about how what the other person's going through, what you're going through. The truth is beyond ourselves, and we can ask God for wisdom. I, I beg you to pray that. Start to pray this every single day this week. God, me wiz, give me wisdom and understanding to know what is going on. Maybe it's politically. Maybe it's at your work. Maybe it's with your spouse. But these things should come into our mouths regularly. God, if you're giving away wisdom, I want it. I want it. I need it. And that will change my whole perspective of my life. Solomon says in Proverbs 2 as well, The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He's got wisdom stored up for you. Isn't that awesome? And he is a shield for those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Over the way of his saints that we could say, God, would you guide me, guard me, protect me? But it all begins with this, that God has wisdom stored up for you. And maybe you're in a situation now that you're like, I don't know what to do. And God's like, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting, just begin to ask, just begin to desire in your heart for the knowledge that he has for you and knowing him that he could give you the peace and understanding to get through whatever you're going through. 
And the last point of this, of just, we know God, we ask from God, but we also receive from God. Listen to this passage in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 10. We declare God's wisdom, a mystery that's been hidden and that God has destined for our glory before time began. These are the things that God has revealed to us by his spirit. He's revealing to us by your spirit. So this means this. We desire to want to know God. We ask him for wisdom. And then we don't just say, in Jesus' name, amen, and run out the day and keep yourself really busy checking your phone 200 times a day and just downloading all of this information. No, you've got to ask and learn to wait. Wait and begin to cultivate to hear the voice of God in your life. This is why we took the last seven weeks after the message to pause and wait upon God, to learn, to cultivate, to hear his voice speak to you, to speak to you. We can't just give it 30 seconds and then just move on or walk away. But these are the great moments of learning to walk to school or walk to work or park at the back of the parking lot and take your time and don't put on more music and just listen And take time to listen and receive and apply the things that he drops into your heart. This is to be cultivated in your life, that we could hear the voice of God drop wisdom in your heart. And then when you put it into practice and go, oh my goodness, I've seen it happen. Oh my goodness, this truth has come to be. Oh my goodness, God is with me and his promises are true. And he is guiding and directing me in all of these things. When we're worried, when we're anxious, God has wisdom for you that could be the foundation of peace in your life. This is so key. So I ask of you, don't just ask for miracles or supernatural movement in your life, but ask for God to give you wisdom and understanding in every situation that you're in. This brings us to the sources of wisdom. And so there's this book called The Wisdom Pyramid that its author is Brett, uh, Brett McCracken. And he identifies six places, six different places in our lives and in our environment that we can go for wisdom. And it really matters the importance and the amount that you have on each. Why we called it, why he decides to call it the wisdom pyramid. And I'm just going to go through them very quickly. But I encourage you, if this, if this conversation of wisdom and understanding is really intriguing to you, to go ahead and buy this book and walk through the processes of this. Because this is really important where you get your information and how much information you're getting from each speaks about its priority in your life. And so let's have a look at that today. The first one is this, and the bottom section is this. If you can see that, is the scriptures, is the Bible. Paul said from uh, 2 Timothy 3, the holy scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, and through them you may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every good work to apply this knowledge to everything in your life. Not some things in your life, but absolutely everything in your life. I encourage you and and push this towards you today. Invite God's scripture into every area of your life so that you are ready for every good work. Test and see for your own experience the wisdom that God has for your daily life. Not a life of, of yesteryear or a long time ago, but for you right now this week. The question comes up. Do you give that the priority? If you're a follower of Jesus, is it the foundation? Is it where you go to first and most for the wisdom for your life to make good decisions? St. Augustine says, We must think and believe that whatever is written in the Holy Scripture is better and truer than anything we could devise by our own wisdom. Test and see. And I hope that you find that you are the prescription of the the priority and proportion of your life is coming from the scriptures. The second area there, which is a little bit smaller, is the church. To realize that we need each other and we need to be committed to each other to receive wisdom that is available from the family of believers. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. That we have wisdom that's in the room to correct and help each other move together and move forward in together. That the church is the second priority of source of wisdom for your life. 
Because we don't just hear from God and apply it to our lives, but we have the encouragement to apply it to our lives by the wisdom that's in the room to experience the wisdom in the room. We encourage you throughout the week, and we even have this program called Right Now Media that allows you to have Bible studies from other sources. But it is the second uh, of the importance next to the next to the scriptures that we have here together. And the reason why I say this in community together, because if you prioritize online watching from other pastors and other churches, things could get quite confusing because you're not in relationship. You're not in relationship to what is going on here. When we go on to watch other churches, and as long as that's there as a supplemental to church, it's great. But if it becomes the priority, then all of a sudden there can be quite a lot of confusion of what's going on. So different denominations and different emphasis to our church. But what God is doing in your life, in your town, is through the local church. And many of those videos, I like it. I like how it opens up with, this is great for you to watch, but if you're not from our church, make sure that it's supplemental to and not the foundation of your understanding and reading. We don't know the sources. We don't know the background. We don't know the character. when when we're only watching things online. And so I challenge you for the ratio that you're looking at here, what is the priority of the truth from our church and the proportion from our church versus other sources? The third level that Brett speaks about is through nature. Romans 1 says God's quality and power are seen and understood from creation and nature. The wisdom pyramid voices it this way. Studies show that urban living is literally changing our brains, causing them to become overwhelmed by the access of digital stimuli and increasing our odds to schizophrenia, anxiety, and mood disorders. And so more and more people are finding more than just some nice exercise as they walk through the forest, but actually a settling of their hearts, a settling of their spirits, a settling of their emotions as they walk through and look at what God has created and let creation, nature, speak to them. The fourth area is in books. Books, there's an increasing amount of research that shows that reading books as opposed to reading something quickly and fragmented from online, but books strengthen our brain's ability to think well and that those who don't are are more prone to believing false information. So reading a book with more study and more background going on slows life down to really chew on these things. It creates the opportunity for understanding the more we read from books. There's also beauty that comes into mind because wisdom is more than just knowing in our heads. It also involves our bodies, senses, and our emotions. That yesterday I was sitting there watching the moment of happening as we celebrated entrepreneurial women and encouraged them and their gifts and skills. And I kept saying to different people, I love how the church can support the arts and the beauty of all the things around and the support. And I said to many of them, there's something else that's going on here than just a, a nice little fun moment of, of, uh, of a market. You know, but there's something deeper and significant. Actually, I found myself on the verge of tears for most of the morning going, the support and encouragement was so beautiful yesterday. It was so much more than just a nice little moment on a Saturday morning in a market. But between the women's encouragement, it was profound. I believe wisdom was being infused into their souls as they honored one each other in community. And we celebrated the beauty of God through art and the gifts of our community. I loved it. It was great to be a part of. Beauty is a source of our wisdom as well. And then lastly, online sources. And so you could see that the pyramid is in this. So I need you this morning to evaluate your life when it comes to the original question. Where do you go when you need to make a big decision in your life? Where do you go as a source of wisdom? Where do you go the most? Where do you go the least? Is the pyramid upside down? Is it the opposite that we find ourselves searching online for just whatever randomly shows up in our feed and that teaches us things? Or is the foundation of our life God's word? Why don't you turn your Bibles with me to James chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. And I'll close with this as the band comes back this morning. Wise thinking leads to gracious living. Wise thinking leads to gracious living. Listen to how James speaks of this. 
In James chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Who is wise among you? Let them show it by their good life. Who is wise among you? Well, let them show that they are wise by their good life, by deeds done in humility and with wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. What an amazing passage. Amazing passage that underlines everything we've spoken about here, about our preferences and opinions about what the truth is from all of this information. That is like, if you are wise, if you are wise, and you can look at yourself, am I a wise person? Maybe we should ask our neighbor. Maybe we should ask our spouse or our kids. Does this sound like me? Is it pure? Is it peace-loving? Is it considerate or submissive? Am I full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere? Does this sound like me? If it doesn't, where am I getting my wisdom from? Where am I getting my information? Is my wise thinking leading towards gracious living? So that those around are experiencing the wisdom that comes from heaven that draws all people to him. This is so important. James says that earthly wisdom leads towards being envy, selfish, and disorder, evil practices, compromising, unspiritual, and demonic. James says that the heavenly wisdom will be full of humility and love, grace and mercy, impartiality, putting other people first and serving them, sincerely the fruit of the Spirit moving in our lives. This is what we want. This is what we need. Don't you find that? In the big decisions of our lives and how that we choose to live every single day, we seek to God for will you guide us? Will you walk with us? Will you give us the wisdom that we need? So I need you to examine yourself. Where am I getting my information? Where is all the information coming from that's just being poured into my heart? If there's more information coming outside of the Bible and the scriptures, that you are prone to a situation of deception that leads to a spot of that you are in a snare and a trap and it's hard to get rid of that kind of truth. But the freedom that comes, as Jesus says, the truth will set you free when it's from the head, when it's from his mouth. Colossians 2, 3 says, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. Would you take time to seek him today? We're going to sing a song again, and I want that prayer in your heart to roll out. God, I need your wisdom. I need your wisdom to lead me in the security of my life. Feel yourself encouraged to say, God, I know that you have it stored up for me, and I want to learn how to have a gracious life. I want to learn and know how important it is to see things from your perspective so that I'm able to give away grace, give away grace on an ongoing basis. Would you stand with me this morning? As the band sings this last song, let that prayer come to your heart. Say, God, I want your wisdom to be real and evident in my life as I seek you this morning. Why don't we take some moment to do that today? the 
represent all truth and all grace for us. In 1 Timothy 3.16, Paul shares one of these essential truths uh, to the church that is so essential for your life. And most of the people at that time, about 90% or more, are illiterate. 
So when, when Paul is emphasizing something and kind of putting in a phrase that you see it kind of in italics in, in your Bible, you might see it as a song that's sung. And so uh, I can't sing it quite in Greek, so I'm not going to be able to sing it for you today. But this was said closer in a song to the church. He said, he appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by the angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. This would have been sung maybe at the end of their songs as a church, and you're like, this is the essential truth, so let's sing it and know it and memorize it about this is the truth that we stand on. You might be here and going, how do we know these scriptures are true? Because Jesus died and rose again. And they would have said that. How do you know, Paul? How do you know, church? They would have said, well, he appeared in a body, talking about Jesus. God became man. And he was vindicated by the Spirit, meaning he was resurrected from the dead. He was seen and witnessed by angels. He's preached among the nations. That's our job. It was believed on in the world that it's working. The gospel is going forth and lives are being changed. Do you know that there's an estimated that 5 billion people have been told the gospel on earth today? And people are desperately trying to get that last 3 billion people to hear the gospel, to hear the gospel that is believed on in the world. The gospel is on the move and he was taken up in glory and people saw it happen that the truth of God was witnessed by. And they sang it and they celebrated. In fact, this passage starts with these words in my NIV say, beyond all question. But it really means by common confession that we're saying, I believe this. You're holding the symbols today saying, I believe. This is by common confession. We confess, we believe these things together. Jesus again appeared in flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by the angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that to let it roll? Say, God, I believe in your wisdom that has the mysteries of the world for me, stirred up, stored up for me. Lord, I believe in you today. So when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you believe today, let us celebrate what Jesus has done for us. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is my new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, and we remember. Come well, on, let us drink, saying, we believe and remember today. One more time, let's sing this chorus together. All my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Just go ahead and tell him this morning that he's good. Lord, you've been good. You've been faithful. Your wisdom is beyond or above our own, Lord, and we're so thankful for it. That we have tested and seen that your wisdom is far beyond mine how much I need it every day. 
God, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you that it's stored up. And I thank you that you are ready to give it for those that ask. I pray that you'll put this on our hearts this week, Lord, that when we are confused, when we don't know, when we're not sure, God, we can reach out for your wisdom and we can pray and believe that you'll give it. And we'll celebrate it in testimony, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for coming and being a part of our service today. Get invite that the prayer corner team can come forward at this time and just be available for anybody that would love to be prayed for, for any situation going on in your life. Maybe you're in that moment right now that you need wisdom and just somebody to pray for you about that wisdom. You could come forward and have that prayer for you today. For those connect cards, please drop them in on the box on the way out. And for all of the members as well, you need to go out of the room, check in to come back in. But we'll start that maybe in about 15 minutes or so. So God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. And we'll see you again next week.